All right, folks, welcome back. All right, so I'm going to be doing both mentorship groups, both YouTube and the private mentorship in this video. I apologize, but I have a unexpected event come up, so I have to take care of that going into tomorrow. So I have to get ready for that. So I can't obviously do both. So I'll be away from social media and YouTube tomorrow as well. Everything's fine. I just have to take care of something that's going to require my full attention. So I can't be obviously in both places at one time. So on the right hand side, at the dollar index daily chart, as I was referring to in the past week or so, we were looking at the S&T divergence here. You can clearly see that with the euro dollar down here. This is the overlay. Slightly higher highs, three Indian patterns on a daily chart. You'll see that again when we go back into the daily chart. So higher highs not being seen with lower lows as you would expect in dollar index inside of a fair value gap, inside of a primary bull trend, and our SIBI here. Consequent encroachment, midpoint of the imbalance. Our target has been reached. Final target would be 107.61. We'll see if that is in play for tomorrow. Uh, it is Thursday as a reminder, just be careful, try not to push too hard and don't force it, but we'll be looking for that. Should it hit that 107.61, we're done for the week. We won't consider anything on Friday. On the hourly chart, you can see the imbalance here at the 106.42 level. That's this level here on the old SIBI. So this level here, we see it trade down into it after midnight in New York, so this level is here, and we have the fair value gap. So it drops down into a fair value gap, completely bring us to a discount due to swing. So here's the opening, we drop down, run sell side out. Look at all the candles here. Sell side's been taken, purged, and then runs quickly for the consequent encroachment between 107.61 and 106.42. And again, that's the levels of here we've been watching for weeks now. All right, your dollar on the left daily chart. Here's that three Indians pattern we've been discussing and looking for lower prices. Finally, had some expansion moving lower. We were looking for the SMT divergence here. Again, comparing the lows with dollar with the highs of euro dollar. Higher high, higher high, higher high. Higher lows in dollar. That's cracking correlation. That's SMT divergence or USDX SMT divergence. So we have heavy distribution inside of a fair value gap in the form of a SIBI breaks lower attacks the sell side liquidity we have nice range expansion on the downside which is what we were looking for into the hour chart you can see again the imbalance that we were looking at here nice optimal trade entry shift in market structure beautiful delivery here expansion large range candles down below the sell side liquidity at 1.03403 again that's that old low here relative equal lows let's go back and refer to that again to zoom out again you'll see what that level is and last night i mentioned we'll have to play it by ear at midnight see what we'll get uh, would we get to this area here run into that and try to rebalance it and then sell off or if it runs above this and drops down into it for london session and that could potentially set up a run back into that 10340 level. But as you can see here, we had just a small little shallow run above relative equal highs for buy sell liquidity and reaching into consequent encroachment of the SIBI here. 15 minute time frame on the left hand side, we have two fair value gaps overlaid and refined. Again, that's the one that was shown on the hourly chart. And then here's one that's been refined. All of this price action back and forth, back and forth. Then we have one single candle here between this candle's high and that candle's low. Left a small little portion of it open between that low and that high. Buy sell liquidity resting above relative equal highs. See all this right here? Retail is going to see that as resistance. Market drops down initially at midnight here. We're not interested in that. Leaves the low, relative equal lows rallies up why is it doing that it's engineering liquidity here what kind of liquidity sell side liquidity it runs up to the buy side liquidity completely closes in the fair value gap here due to swing breaks down attacks the sell side here runs aggressively into the morning session with several lower lows in here notice the night opening price at new york so here's midnight local time new york 
that opening price right there. We're extending out in time. So here is our classic sell day scenario. Trades up, rebalance, buy side liquidity, drops lower. On the five minute chart, you can see it refined here. Break lower. Here is displacement. We have institutional order flow entry drill here. Not needing all of this to be rebalanced. Drops lower. We also have breaker. High, low, higher high. We want the down candle that has the most body. And this is not what we're considering. It's a, this is a stop run. So you look through that. We're not supply and demand. We go through candles. Down close candle. Take that range extended out in time. That right there is your SIBI and return back to a bearish breaker. Okay, hits that, drops lower. Nice little fair value gap in here, trades back up into that. Nice and short also going into the New York session. Really nice to climb into the New York early morning hours going into lunchtime for New York. British pound. Lower highs, higher highs with Euro. So this is correlated pair SMT divergence. Okay, correlated pair SMT divergence is where we're looking at pound versus Euro or Australian dollar versus New Zealand dollar. They're very, very closely correlated, but if there's a crack in that correlation, which is what we're showing here, this is my SMT divergence, higher high, higher high, lower high in cable. And we had sell side liquidity here as our objective. And we can see we've really nicely done a cascading into that level there. Here is this level here. Now I'm, I'm looking at this. I didn't. I don't have this actually drawn correctly. I apologize. That should not actually be touching that. So that box should be anchored to here, and I don't have that correctly done. And you'll understand what I'm referring to if you look at your forex.com feed on TradingView for pound dollar hourly chart. If you're looking at that fair value gap. Draw your line from that here or your rectangle anchor from here to here. This chart, at least it looks like it's touching it. It did not touch that. That price is actually just a little bit less than that one here. But that would have been one to expect and look for, obviously. Uh, it broke lower, sell side as we were. And then we have the fair value gap here at the old low. The market runs up into that, rebalances it, and then attacks the sell side liquidity resting below that low right there. So we have fair value gap to sell side liquidity, really nice little distribution day on pound dollar. So here's your framework here. Those levels we'll look at on the 15 and five minute chart now. So here's that here. Hourly imbalance, buy side liquidity purged and 60 minute or hourly fair value gap rebalanced here. Breaks lower, attacks the sell side liquidity there. On the five minute chart, you can see during the London open kill zone, we rebalanced the fair value gap on the 60 minute chart. All the buy side liquidity here is purged. Then we have our shift in market structure, this low here. How do we know that? It's displacement. Trades back up into the small little fair value gap here. Trades lower, breaks lower, consolidates, and then breaks again going into the New York session, attacking the sell side liquidity right there. That's this level here. And that's all the sell side being paired with the buy side that was taken in as short for smart money there. And obviously we consolidate back into the range between 1934, which is this level here, the old low on the daily, it runs right back up into that. E-mini S&P 500 daily chart, September delivery contract on the left-hand side, on the right-hand side, NASDAQ, September delivery contract. Uh, the reason why we're trading the September contract is because the contracts expire. Okay, we've, prior to the September contract, we were trading June 2022. That has since expired. So this contract is considered the front month or most active until we get about the second week of September. Then this contract will expire. And then we'll be trading the December contract of 2022 for both indices. So I see a lot of questions asked in the comment sections. Why am I looking at this and why is it the September contract when we're not in September yet? Uh, you're trading the next month of delivery or the nearby contract or the most active when you're trading futures. Uh, there is no 
earlier contract. There is no July contract. There is no August contract. The next available contract for trading index futures is September. So the contract months for these indices when you're trading them is March, June, September, December. There's only four per year. Okay, so one contract per quarter, and that's the order in which they expire. And you roll over to the next contract month when the contract that is the front month, when it expires, you go to the next one in that order. All right, so we're looking at the daily chart on the left-hand side of S&P. We have the SIBI here, all of this imbalance. This, again, this is my interest for the remainder of the week. It may not get up there, folks, It's you know, but that's what I'm looking for. Same thing over here with the NASDAQ. A uh, little bit different flavor between the two. Uh, we have the gap here, which we've been monitoring for good grief almost a month now. But over here, notice the difference? We're significantly lower than that. This here, I used that level here today, and we'll add that in terms of the framework with FOMC notes for 2 o'clock hour. And then we have this low here to that high. So there is your fair value gap being framed from that candle's low, that candle's high. That's all that level is there. So when we get into lower time frames, that thinner blue is not this. Okay, It's not an order block. It's just the low of the gap. So we're referring back to that level. Again, we're not supply and demand. We cut through candles. Sorry, Sam. All right, so here is the business. All right, uh, notice that we had on S&P ahead of FOMC, we had unfinished business here with these relative equal highs, then that of NASDAQ. NASDAQ was able to clear these earlier, and I mentioned that last night on the YouTube video as well. We were able to get above the highs relative in terms of this area here in NASDAQ, but we had not made its way to that level for that buy side yet ahead of FOMC. And then we also had the imbalance over here. So sell side imbalance there in the form of that fair value gap. So the low hanging fruit would be this level here. Okay, so we're gonna look for this run here and then reach into that. I know this seems like hindsight for some of you that are not in the click, but this is how we roll, <laughs> okay? So you're getting kind of a taste of what it's like to be with me, but don't get too comfortable because this isn't going to continue, obviously. But I, again, I just want to remind you folks, this is, again, not hindsight. All right, hourly chart, S&P, left-hand side. Here is those relative equal highs. We ran through that on FOMC, and here is that 3840 level. And here is that old gap low in that thinner blue line I mentioned on the NASDAQ. So here's a fair value gap. We dropped down into that ahead of FOMC early in the day. Notice that the entire day was just choppy and aimless. Okay, But I'm going to take you into the chart a little bit deeper and show you what was going on that you could anticipate, again, that it was going to likely go to the upside. Same thing over here. So this level here is... 38.57 and three quarters. That level right there. It's, again, that's the old relative equal highs. And we'll see that in the next slide here. We're in a 15-minute time frame. Last down close candle prior to this run. We have this is the order block. And the market runs up. Initially at 2 o'clock, it opens, rallies up, gets everybody thinking it's going to run here. Then they sink it back down into the order block right there. Same thing with the NASDAQ. It opens, trades higher, then comes back down into the order block, does it twice, opens, trades down once more here, and then they send it higher. Here's that 38.57 three quarters level, that old relative equal high on the daily chart on the S&P that has not been traded to while the NASDAQ was able to trade above its relative equal highs days before. So we had unfinished business above 38.57 and three quarters, here is the business, all right? We have two o'clock in the afternoon on FOMC. Here is for those PM session afternoon warriors that just simply want to get in there and dirty their hands, get blood on their gown, and there it is. Here it is. This is the FOMC approach. You have to have a bias, obviously. What's it reaching for? Obviously, we had unfinished business for S&P. That means buy side is going to be the likely objective. That means 3057 or higher. And... We have 2 o'clock is when FOMC comes out. So you want to treat that as the beginning of the day for yourself. Everything prior to that, 
irrelevant. We're treating it like a new start of a new day, like midnight in New York. So how is that done? We use the opening price at two o'clock, extend it out in time. If we're bullish, we want to see something drop down. We want to see a price go lower. That's a Judas swing. The market drops. We're not interested in chasing it here. We want to see it drop down and it goes into the order block. Then it does this false attempt to go below that low. So we're having a higher high here. Think about what I just explained to you. S&P had unfinished business. So it's going to hint ahead of time that that's the one you want to be in because it has a reason to go higher. NASDAQ has been above its relative equal highs on the hourly chart for a day or so. This S&P market hasn't done that yet. So it has to catch up. So it has a sympathy play that's unraveling in price where it needs to catch up to that of the NASDAQ. So buy side is the draw on liquidity. 38.57 and three quarters. That's that hourly relative equal high on S&P. So it goes without saying that this one should fail to make a lower low when NASDAQ made its lower low when it traded into its order block. See that? So there's smart money accumulating without an indicator, okay? Without supply and demand, without anything harmonic. This is smart money accumulation right in here. That's not white golf, okay? That's not anything else except for understanding the logic and narrative. When should the volatility come in? Two o'clock. Why? Because the FOMC minutes are going to be released then. Okay. We have unfinished business in S&P. It's going to draw a price higher. NASDAQ will probably move with it in sympathy as well. But we really want to be focusing on the S&P because it needs to go up to that buy side liquidity that has not been seen and traded to yet. While NASDAQ has been going higher, a little bit more energetic on the upside because it has been the relative strength leader. But now, just like it says in the Bible, first one now should later be last. This right here is just a stop run where this is accumulation and signaling to smart money it's time to buy below the opening price here into the order block here into the fair value gap here never made its way down to a second pass into the order block where it does do so here and then we have explosive rally, rally up into that 38.57 and three quarters level short term swing high then digs into 38.74 even What's 38.74 even? Above 38.71 and a half. That imbalance over here on the hourly chart for S&P. Okay. And let's continue on with this carnival-like atmosphere. Get myself caught up. And last thing on our docket today is gold. As you all know, I've drawn your attention to this area here because if we were going to have that continuation higher on dollar as i was giving you a gun to my head this is how i do it in the mentorship sometimes i don't have a hard bias but i have to tell my community what i believe is going to happen so it's not a plan a plan b it's not a it's not me picking both sides in the marketplace and then when it unfolds one direction then i say see how smart i was that's what trolls will say about me you all have had a taste of this Gun to my head, I said we were running for liquidity resting below here. We've had that. And then we talked about it last night on YouTube. So the bias is what? Still reaching for here. So how do we use that for this day here? Well, the bias from this day's close yesterday, bias is what? Still bearish. Why? Because it hasn't gone down below these relative equal lows yet. Before we drop down to the lower time frame, I do believe that this is the next draw on liquidity. I'm not certain that we're going to go below this yet. Okay, just... Bear that in mind, but I do think that this is a realistic objective to continue into Thursday. All right, overnight we have midnight New York local time. The market drops down. We're not interested in that. We want to see a rally. So here's the opening price, which I don't have on here because I don't want to clutter the chart up, but you can have that on yours. Opening price, we run above that. Here's your Judas swing. It breaks down. Now you can use this one here, short term swing low, displacement, run up into that level right there. That could be your short. Or you wait until New York. Then we have this low broken. Take the fib from here to here. Why here? Because prior to this run back up, that's your low. So here's dealing range here to here above 50%. 
There's your fair value gap. Returns right back into it again. And like you would expect from good old ICT concepts, it delivers like gangbusters. Trades back down into a nice little objective, which you can see right here. The way I got this target is you want to take the high to the low and on your fib, put in negative two and you'll get that level here, which is the bodies of the candles here. This low here is by taking the same fib, anchoring it from here down to that low there and you'll get the almost ultra low of the day that's what that level is here so you want to pull your fit from here to here that's going to be a standard deviation of negative three this one here is negative two so two price swings from here to here and then here to here and you'll get those projections down okay and I, you know we'll see if it wants a rollover it certainly looks like it could it might want to do something with a little bit of a pump but i'd prefer it not to do that i like to see it just stay heavy and roll over and attack the level down here and then close the week out with that as your objective and that my friends is going to be it i will touch base with you lord willing on friday and until then be safe